most of the time I cover fairly user-facing topics, whether that be a software showcase, a fairly high-level kernel update, or even things like FOSS drama, but there is a lot more going on in the background that I basically never get into, and today we are covering one such topic, the experimental unikernel patches for the Linux kernel. This was submitted to the Linux kernel a couple of weeks back as an RFC, a request for comment by Ali Raza, basically submitting it to the kernel, but not getting it merged, trying to get feedback on what needs to be done, what changes need to be made, and whether this is actually going to fit into the kernel, and whether you should continue with the project. Now, Ali Raza isn't the only person working on this. This is made in combination with the Boston University, Red Hat, and the Harari Institute of Computing. Have you ever wanted your OS to literally have a single function? And I don't mean installing Windows just to do gaming, or installing something else just to do your schoolwork, or anything else like that. When I say a single function, I actually mean running a single application. So you're probably wondering at this point, what in the world is a unikernel? So you may also see them referred to as a library operating system, which might give you a slight indication of what they actually do. So it's very likely you've heard of the three main types of kernels. You have monolithic kernels, microkernels, and hybrid kernels. This is going to be a very TLDR explanation, but in a monolithic kernel, all of your core system functionality, like your file system, device drivers, CPU scheduler, and all of that fun stuff, all runs in kernel mode. Basically, it has direct access to your hardware, and then your applications, those will run in user mode and interact with those functions when it needs them. In a microkernel, you have a much more simplified interface running in kernel mode, and then whatever can be moved into the user mode is going to be. So you might have a file server and your device drivers running in user mode and then interacting with that interface. And then in a hybrid kernel, you sort of have a mix of both of them. You have some things running in kernel mode and some things running in user mode. And Linux is generally defined as a monolithic kernel, but there are some aspects which you could argue make it a hybrid kernel, but either way, it's not that important. It is not a unikernel. And when we're talking about a general purpose operating system, which is what Linux is, you can go and game on it, you can go and run a web server, you can do scientific research, you can do programming, all on the exact same operating system. All of these models have their benefits and drawbacks, but are all perfectly functional for making an operating system like this. But when we are talking about a hyper-specialized single application system where performance is actually really important, this whole user mode, kernel mode nonsense is kind of just a big waste of time. It's not like you're trying to balance resources between different applications where this split actually makes sense. So wouldn't it make a bit more sense to just get rid of it? So in a unikernel, this is how the model looks. Everything runs in kernel mode. So unikernels are a specialized operating system where an application is linked directly with the kernel and runs in supervisor mode. Everything here is statically linked together. So treat it like an operating system bundle. So you probably know about flat packs and app images where you have all of the dependencies for the application bundled together. This is taking it to the absolute extreme and bundling the kernel with the application. This allows for two really big things. Firstly, syscalls don't exist. Syscalls are replaced with function calls. So a syscall is basically where something in user mode wants to access something in kernel mode. It can't do so directly with a regular function call. It needs to switch context from that user mode into the kernel mode, and switching that context comes with a performance hit. Because everything is running in kernel mode, there's no need to switch that context. And secondly, this allows the developers to implement application-specific optimizations to the kernel, which can be directly invoked by the application without going through the syscall path. An application can control scheduling and resource management and directly access the hardware. Application and the kernel can be co-optimized, e.g. through LTO, PGO, etc., 
all of these optimizations and others provide applications with a huge performance benefit over general purpose operating systems. But even without doing those extra optimizations, it leads to a smaller system size and a smaller memory footprint. Now this is not the first time that a unikernel has existed, but most of the experimentation happened back in the 90s. We had the exokernel and the Nemesis operating system, neither of these though being based on Linux, and that is the biggest problem. So a lot of these older unikernels, they were a whole complete separate operating system. So what did they suffer from? Lack of developer support, lack of battle tested code, lack of device drivers, basically making them nothing more than like a university experiment. And that is the difference with Linux. It's Linux. It already has all of those things. The only thing it's currently missing is a unikernel mode. Linux is the de facto operating system of today. Obviously, it doesn't mean on the desktop, but when we're talking about embedded usage and web usage and things like that, yeah, Linux is incredibly popular. Applications depend on its battle-tested code base, larger developer community, support for legacy code, a huge ecosystem of tools and utilities, and a wide range of compatible hardware and device drivers. Linux also allows some degree of application-specific optimizations through build time config options, runtime configuration, and recently through eBPF. But still there is a need for even more fine-grained application-specific optimizations and some developers resort to kernel bypass techniques. Unikernel Linux aims to get the best of both worlds by bringing application-specific optimizations to the Linux ecosystem. This way, unmodified applications can keep getting the benefits of Linux while taking advantage of the unikernel-style optimizations. Optionally, applications can be modified to invoke deeper optimizations. There are two steps to unikernelizing Linux. That's not a word, but we'll go with it. First, equip Linux with a unikernel model. And second, actually use that model to implement application-specific optimizations. This patch focuses on the first part. Through this patch, unmodified applications can be built as Linux unikernels albeit with only modest performance advantages. Like Unikernels, UKL, which is Unikernel Linux, would allow an application to be statically linked into the kernel and executed in supervisor mode. And the rest of this block can basically be summed up as, but we don't want to change the rest of Linux. Unless I am missing something, this has absolutely no purpose on the general desktop, but think systems where a single application is running, like a cash register, a ticketing stand, some sort of embedded system controlling like a factory arm, and you've probably seen some of these systems crashing out to the desktop. Why do you need a desktop there if you're running a cash register? The cash register app is never going to be closed, so why not just make this part of the kernel itself? And this one may be a little bit less popular, but think about the computer in your car's dashboard. In certain cars, in certain updates, there are ways to crash out of that system and then start running basically anything else you want. And from the Tinkerer's perspective, this is a great thing to be doing. But if you're a car manufacturer, you may want to have that system be more tightly grouped together and that not being possible. That does offer concerns with being able to more easily lock down these systems, but from their perspective, I can see why it'd be useful. Now this patch set does have a little bit of feedback that's mainly just about cleaning up the patches, splitting out things into separate commits, clarifying certain things that are being done, why they're being done, but not much in the way of actually bringing the support into Linux, with the exception of this email, which isn't exactly very positive. This is basically taking Linux and turning it into a whole new operating system, while expecting the Linux community to carry the support burden thereof. We have seen this before, notably with Zen. It is expensive and painful for the maintenance of the mainstream kernel. Linux already has a notion of kernel mode applications. They are called kernel modules and kernel threads. It seems to me that you are trying to introduce a user space compatibility layer 
into the kernel, with the only benefit being avoiding the syscall overhead. The latter is bigger than we would like, which is why we are changing the x86 architecture to improve it. In my opinion, this would require enormous justification to put it into mainline. Now you may think especially this bit is a little bit harsh, expecting the Linux kernel community to carry the support burden, but this is one of the purported benefits of bringing this into the kernel. This project aims to turn the Linux kernel into a Unix kernel with the following characteristics. 1. Are easily compiled for any application. 2. Use battle-tested production Linux and glibc code. 3. Allow the entire upstream Linux developer community to maintain and develop the code. We will allow you to maintain our experiment for us, and I can totally understand why a kernel maintainer might not exactly be happy about that. At this stage, it's very possible that this never makes its way into the Linux kernel, but I do think it is a really neat project, and I love to see the way that certain people are trying to make use of Linux. So what do you think about this patch set? Do you think it has any purpose whatsoever, or do you think it's just a giant waste of time? I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video, and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribers, or Umbrella Pay, linked down below. I just completely scuffed that up. Uh, podcast, tech over tea, gaming channel, Brody Robinson Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.